So I have some uh, some new poll numbers here that are really interesting to me because, um, I mean, it's a little contradictory. Actually, I mean, I'll leave that up to you whether or not you think it's contradictory, but um, there's certainly a dynamic here that I don't think I've ever seen before at work in politics. So look at this. This is a ABC and Washington Post poll among Democrats. Who would you prefer to be the 2024 presidential nominee? Someone else, 56%. Biden, just 35%. This is the sitting U.S. president. He would have massive uh, incumbent advantage. And only 35% say they want Biden to run again. Now, this is at the same time, this is fascinating, that Biden is actually surging in the polls, in terms of his favorability. So let me show you that here. Um, President Joe Biden's approval rating bounced higher over the past month, helped by lower gas prices and a series of legislative wins. A new IBD TIPP poll finds younger Americans in particular rallied around Biden following approval of the Climate Focused Inflation Reduction Act and his decision to forgive up to $20,000 in college loans. Biden's approval rating jumped 6.6 points to 49%, the highest since April. So understand something, guys. That's not, that's 49% approval with the country. That's not 49% with younger people. His approval rating with younger people is higher than that. 49%. Okay, this is, honestly, at this point, this is even higher than Obama was at this point in his presidency. This is higher than Trump was at his at this point in his presidency. Biden's average is about 44 or 45% now. So this one poll has met 49%. This is like in the territory of where he was when he was first president and it was like the grace period, the honeymoon period. This is back to that number. I mean, his highest approval rating ever was like 52 or 54% and it was right after he cut checks for $1,400 to people. So we're flirting with that territory right now. So this is a fascinating dynamic. At the same time, he's surging in popularity because of his legislative wins recently. Americans are still like, I kind of, still kind of want somebody else. So look, my reading of this, and perhaps this is me just pro projecting my own biases onto the American people, is people are acknowledging good things when they happen, right? And they're rewarding Biden, Biden for that in the sense that more of them now say they like them. Um, so, like they said, Inflation Reduction Act. Props for that. Uh, student loan debt elimination, props for that. But, just because they're giving him props for what he did that was good, does not mean that, you know, they're incapable of a nuanced thought that, yeah, but we really do need better, and we need more, and this isn't nearly enough. And look, I think that's the correct analysis. Um, I think now he's doing a much better job than I thought he would ever do as president but I also think like it is time for something new I would much rather see Marianne Williamson be president or John Fetterman or Raphael Warnock or whoever I mean uh, uh, there's many people to the left of Biden that are more committed to a serious agenda uh, and I prefer any of them to Joe Biden but at the same time now I think it's fair to say yeah you're doing even better definitely better than Obama was doing when he was in office because I'm actually surprised by the slate of legislative victories that they got. 15% corporate minimum tax rate is a huge deal. Huge deal. Negotiating some uh, lower prescription drug prices. That's a gigantic deal, man. Uh, probably the most based thing the Democrats did was after the Supreme Court said, yes, the Environmental Protection Agency is no longer allowed to protect the environment. Democrats said, my ass, bitch. And they slipped a provision into the Inflation Reduction Act, which defines... Um, carbon emissions as a pollutant and then it allows the EPA to re-regulate carbon emissions. I mean, this is like, that was super slick politics and it was aggressive and it worked and it was the right thing to do. You gotta give credit for that. Um, the CHIPS Act, even though in, it's, in some ways it's like a corporate welfare bill and Bernie had um, raised some concerns about it, the core of it is bringing back microchip jobs to the US, which if they actually follow through on that, then that's a massive, massive victory. The PACT Act, the health care for veterans exposed to toxic burn pits. I mean, the list goes on and on, right, of the new victories that, that Biden notched. 
Not the least of which, again, is the student loan debt reduction, which is probably one of the better things that he did. So, people are saying, credit, but also, nah dog, it's still past your time, and let's go with somebody else who... And by the way, I don't want to make it, because a lot of people will turn this into a generational point, like, oh, he's too old, and that's the reason why people are saying this. No, it's really, it's not his age. His age is a factor, but it's not the factor as to why the Democratic base wants more out of a politician. It's because we are functionally in revolutionary times right now, and this ain't going to cut it. What we're seeing now ain't going to cut it. You know, we hit a turning point in 2008, and we didn't turn. That was the Obama years. He could have been the next FDR. He wasn't. Biden, certainly way better than Obama, but still ain't nowhere near as important as FDR in terms of redefining the era. You know, it was FDR who ushered in a New Deal age where made the U.S. more of a social democracy. It's time for another era like that. We need to get past the neoliberal era of, you know, um, the big government. Is, no, I'm sorry. Let me rephrase that. Bill Clinton said the era of big government is over. That was the Democrats solidifying the neoliberal era, which had started under Reagan. Okay, um, we need to get away from that and we need to say something like the era of small government is over. This idea that the government can and should uh, be involved in a way to improve lives, a government that represents the people, that delivers material well-being or at the very least a, a solid social safety net. That's what we need to get to. We need to get back to that. And um, Biden's not the one who's going to usher it in. He has in some ways broken from the neoliberal era, and for that I give him credit, but it ain't enough. And again, I think I think these numbers are exactly correct. The higher approval rating is earned from Biden. It genuinely is. And I'm happy that he earned it. Um, but also, even given that, give me somebody else. Give me somebody further left. Give me somebody... Um, who will really redefine the era and leave neoliberalism in the dustbin of history, because it's definitely time. Hey, y'all, do me a favor and like and subscribe. It helps out big time in the algorithm. Click the bell as well for notifications when videos drop, and watch that video on screen right now. You know you want to.